What's up guys? Alex here. Welcome to my shop. Today we're changing out the rear brake pads and rotor on this VFR 750. And changing that rotor is a bit more tricky than you might think. So let's see what it takes. First, remove the muffin. Then, remove the wheel. I'm using the wheel's inertia to break loose the 19mm lug nuts. I'm reinstalling the lug nuts here to protect the lug stud threads for the next step. This breaker bar wedged between the protected lugs and the ground helps me break loose the 14mm hardware for the brake disc. So to remove the brake disc, it'd be nice to just take it off as it is. Too bad that will never happen. Instead, the driven sprocket and axle will need to be split apart. To do that, I'm going to use the breaker bar wedged between the lugs again, and I'm also going to chalk the front wheel to keep the bike steady. The axle nut takes a lot of torque to break loose, and it takes a big 46mm socket on a 3 quarter inch drive breaker bar. It also helps to unstake the nut before you break it loose. I won't remove the axle nut just yet, but I will remove the chain gun. Next, I'll remove the chain from the driven sprocket by fully removing the chain adjustment lock bolt. Here you'll need Honda's chain adjustment tool that should be in the little tool pouch that comes with the bike. If you don't have one, visit my Etsy page and I can custom create one just for you. Do try to keep the chain from touching the ground. Now I'm going to work on removing the pads from the caliper. Here are the two 12mm caliper mounting bolts. These are the two pad mounting pins in the caliper. I'm going to loosen the pin bolts first, then the caliper bolts. There's a flat head in the back, 14mm for the front. To get access to this front caliper bolt, I have to turn the chain adjuster a little bit. Now I can remove the axle nut, then remove the driven sprocket from the axle. The splines of the sprocket and the axle can get rusted and seize together. If that happens, use a soft faced mallet to knock it loose, hitting the back side of the sprocket on equal sides. From here, I can start replacing the brake components. But first, there's one more thing I want to do. 
a while ago, I replaced the chain on this bike when I really didn't have to because it felt like there was no adjustment left. I found out later that there was a bunch of gravel stuck in between this axle bearing assembly and the swing arm and that kept the adjustment from going any tighter. Lesson learned. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out and make sure it's clean stick it back in. So yeah, it's clean right now, but it was not before. This hub should be able to spin freely. When it's filled with gravel, it doesn't feel like turning so much. It really helps to have a good set of snap ring pliers for this big snap ring. Now to remove the pads. I thought this flathead screw in the back was the bolt, but it's only a cap. The 5mm Allen bolt is hidden underneath. After removing the front slider pin, just pull the caliper off the third slider pin. I will clean and grease all three slider pins. When replacing brake pads, you will always need to compress the caliper pistons. my pads wore all the way down to the metal. Not good. I would go and get the rotor machined as long as it would still be thicker than the minimum 5mm thickness, but I decided to just replace it. Before I compress the pistons, I will need to check on the brake fluid reservoir. On the Honda VFR, the rear brake fluid reservoir is hidden inside the rear ferret, so I must remove it. There are four lights in the back of the rear ferry. Give each one a quarter turn and pull out. It's important to get them back in the same place, so I have labeled them to assist in reassembly. There's that brake fluid reservoir, let's have a look inside. The fluid doesn't look horrible, but I am still going to flush it. You might notice my regulator rectifier looks different. It is probably the best upgrade on this bike. Check the description for links.
my setup here for flushing the rear brake fluid might be a little funky, but it's good for what we're doing. I clamped one of the old brake pads onto the caliper pistons with a couple of my weakest clamps. You should use bigger ones. I will use the clamps to compress the pistons, which will force more fluid back into the reservoir. Then I'm going to siphon the old fluid out using a tube and negative pressure. When it's empty, I'll wipe it out and refill it with new DOT4 brake fluid. Then pump it through the system and out through this bleeder valve. I wrapped one end of my tube with wire to help it hold the bend without kinks. To create a low pressure on the lower end of the tube, I will use compressed air, kind of like this Venturi effect diagram. Once it starts flowing, I'll let gravity fish out the rest. I'll remove the bleeder valve cap and use an 8mm wrench to remove the valve. Brake fluid will start slowly creeping out. Now, press the brake pedal and hold, allowing the fluid to escape from the open bleed valve port. Make sure to plug the port with your finger when you let the pedal back up, or it will ingest air, and you do not want air in the brake lines. I'm going to repeat this process until the reservoir gets close to empty, then refill. Do not let the reservoir go empty, or it will ingest air. Once I see that the brake fluid coming out of the caliper is clean, I'll fill the reservoir one more time and install the bleeder valve. You don't want to leave the bleeder valve off unattended or it will continue leaking until it runs out in the reservoir and it will ingest air. Before I reinstall the bleeder valve, I will clean it up. There's a little port on the bottom that goes inside the caliper, which lets fluid and air out when you loosen the valve when you're bleeding. The process for bleeding is similar to this flushing process that we just did. As I install the valve, fluid should come out the top until it is tight. Snug it up and clean it off. <laughs> 
once the bleed valve is tight and not leaking, reinstall the cap. So I've got the three slider pins clean. And I've got my new pads. Here's the part number. Versus an old pad. Yeesh. There are two metal spring clips here and here. Make sure they are in place. The pads get installed like so. The manual specifies a silicone based grease for the slider pins. After installing the pads into the caliper, just slide the caliper onto the first pin. Hold the pads up into the caliper, then rock the caliper forward. The pads need to fit into that front metal clip. Work the caliper around a little to get the front pin started. It will cross thread very easily, especially if you use a tool to tighten it in. Just move the caliper around until the bolt can get threaded in with fingers only. Here is the clean driven sprocket. This little washer goes inboard. This top hat bushing goes outboard. Then there's this little spring washer. It's a little hard to tell, but the inner radius is higher than the outer radius. It is designed to help keep tension against the nut. The manual specifies to install this washer with a higher inner radius facing the nut. Now to change out the brake disc. Take a 6mm Allen on one side and a 14mm socket on the other. Thank yourself for loosening the hardware already. <laughs> 
Oh no, there's a problem. The original disc has these little recesses for the bolts to fit into, but this new one does not have that. When the nut and bolt are tight, you can see that the bolt threads don't extend out of the nut like it should. There should be a minimum of a few threads showing, and uh, it's not. This is a safety hazard for sure. The best way to rectify this problem is to buy proper OEM parts. Don't buy cheap aftermarket parts. I am going to make this part work though. I have bolts with the same diameter and thread pitch as well as matching head size as far as the height and diameter. The shank is about 3 millimeters longer than the original bolts to compensate for the extra thickness in the new disc. The torque for the brake disc hardware is 25 foot-pounds. I'm going to double up my wrench like this to give me enough leverage to hold the bolt for the torque ratchet. Because this is a rotating assembly, I will use a crisscross applesauce torque pattern. I kind of greased the bearings off camera. Oops! Here, I'm greasing the axle shaft and the splines all the way up to the threads, but not on the threads. Put grease on the splines and the bearing race of the driven gear. Just slide the axle into the hub. Put the smaller washer on first. It has a flatter side and a more roundish side. I like to put the more roundish side outboard. Grease is our friend. It should be on things, except for that, or the pads. Make sure the top hat gets fully seated into the seal of the driven sprocket. Here's that spring washer. The higher inner radius goes out toward the nut. Just before installing the axle nut, clean the axle threads to make sure there is no grease.
the axle nut gets torqued to 141 foot-pounds. That's a lot. So, to steady the bike, I've got a floor jack with a high-tech wood block under the swing arm. The axle nut gets safety by what they call staking. I will use a hammer and a steel punch to deform the end of the nut to fit inside the groove in the axle. I have to move the eccentric chain adjustment to get access for installing the caliper mount bolts. Both caliper mount bolts get a medium strength Loctite applied to the threads. The caliper mount bolts get torqued to 20 foot-pounds. Torque the front caliper pin bolt to 17 foot-pounds. The rear small caliper pin bolt takes a 5mm Allen and gets torqued to 13 foot-pounds. This little cap gets torqued to 1.8 foot-pounds. You can almost hear my calibrated wrist click at the proper torque. Now I will install and adjust the chain. The manual calls for one inch of slack in the chain. The 17mm chain adjustment lock bolt gets torqued to 40 foot pounds. Now I will seat the brakes by working the pedal with this hand and feeling the function with the other. <laughs> 
the 19mm wheel lug nuts get torqued to 80 foot-pounds in crisscross soy sauce style, using the rear brake to steady the wheel for the torque. Here, I'm final checking the brake operation. I want to make sure that the wheel stops, of course, but it's just as important that the brakes release instantly. It's for that reason, it's important to clean and grease the slider plates. My big shop dog and I, Ziggy, hopes that you enjoyed this video. We did our best, right Ziggy? Our best. And we hope that you do the same. Subscribe. Check me out at uneducatedengineer.com. Safe travels.